In this video, we're going to take a look at limits at infinity, which will lead into horizontal asymptotes. So when we say the limit of f as x approaches infinity, we mean the limit of f as x moves increasingly far to the right on the number line. So this means, what is the y value as x gets bigger and bigger? Likewise, we say the limit of f as x approaches negative infinity, we mean the limit of f as x moves increasingly far to the left on the number line. So again, this means what is the y value that we're approaching as x gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So let's take a look at an um, example. So here we have x squared divided by x squared plus 1. And we're going to do this, we're going to graph this using a table of values. So let's start with 0. So it always nice to start at 0 and place this in the middle of our table. And when I get put in 0, I get 0. So let's try some negative numbers. And we'll try some positive numbers. So when I plug these numbers in, I get 9 tenths for negative 3. Negative 2, I get 4 fifths. Negative 1, I get a half. Plug in 1, I also get a half. 2, I get 4 fifths. And 3, I get 9 tenths. So we can see that this is very symmetrical. So when I plot my points, I can plot both sides at the same time. And what this looks like is it actually looks like this. So if you use a graphing program like Desmos or something else, you will find that it looks like this. Now we can see that as we get larger and larger, the denominator will always be greater than our numerator. So therefore, we will be approaching a value, which is looking at our graph, it looks like it will be 1 when we go to infinity. And when we go to negative infinity, it will also be 1. So in general, when we say that what is a limit as f of x approaches infinity, and that limit is L, this means that the graph of f of x approaches y equals L as you plug in larger and larger positive values for x. When we say what is a limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity, and that value is L, this means that the graph approaches y equals L as you plug in larger and larger negative values for x. So <coughs> if I put in a really, really large number, let's say x is 10 to the power of 6, we actually get this really, really long number. The notice is 0.9 with lots of 9s here, and it's pretty close to 1, don't you think? All right, so let's take a look at how this leads into horizontal asymptotes. So we can define um, a horizontal asymptote. It is the line y equals l of the graph, and it occurs if either the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity equals l, or the limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity equals l. So therefore, we can say that f of x has a horizontal asymptote in the equation above, y equals 1. Now, not all graphs have horizontal asymptotes. So for example, you know y equals x squared, the parabola. It goes to infinity um, as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. Now, you can check for the presence of horizontal asymptotes by computing the limits as x approaches infinity and negative infinity and seeing if it either is a number. So this is a very kind of a crude kind of way, but it's nice to always be able to plug in numbers and to see what happens. So I'm going to use this input output table um, to plug the numbers in. So I'm going to plug in 1, and then I jump to 10, 50, 100, and then 2,000. So when I plug in the number 1, I get 2. When I plug in 10, I get 29 over 10, which is 2.9. I plug in 50, I get 149 over 50, which is 2.98. 100, I get 299 over 100, which is 2.99, and you kind of see what's happening. Plug in 2,000, I get 5,999 over 2,000, which equals 2.9995. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me.
excuse me. So as the inputs get larger and larger, um, you can see that the outputs are getting closer and closer to the number three. So we would then say that the limit of this function as x approaches infinity is equal to three. Now we don't always wanna just plug in numbers. Um, sometimes it's not very accurate. It's, it takes a long time, it's hard to see. So I'm gonna show you how to do this also algebraically. So we're gonna use algebra to write um, our function in the equivalent form. And what we do is we divide each term by the variable with the highest exponent that is in the denominator. All right, now we also have to use the fact that um, a divided by x to the n, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, remember a is a constant number here, then since x is getting so big in the denominator, really we are going to be approaching zero. Okay. All right, so let's use the same example to show you how this works. All right, so what I'm going to do is my denominator in the bottom, so it says divide each term by the variable with the highest exponent that is in the denominator. Now this one only has one, um, one variable. <coughs> I'll show you later with other ones that are different. So we're going to divide the numerator and denominator by x. So we have the limit as x approaches infinity. If I divide everything by x, I get 3 minus 1 over x, and then in the denominator, I get 1. So, using my limit laws, I have x approaches infinity for 3, minus the limit of 1 over x as x also approaches infinity. So it doesn't matter what happens in the first term, in our first, ter yes, in our first term, the limit is always going to be 3. In the second term, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, we say that this approaches zero. So we have three minus zero, which means it's going to equal three. Now note that limits can fail to exist if f of x increases or decreases without bound as x approaches infinity or x approaches negative infinity. <coughs> Without bound means that it's gonna keep going forever, okay? So an example of this would be y equals x cubed. So we know that that graph looks something like this. So there's no bound, there's no upper limit, or I shouldn't use that word, there's no upper number that x is approaching and there's no lower uh, number that x is approaching and so therefore y value keeps increasing as well. Now the second um, way that the limit can fail is the graph of f of x oscillates indefinitely. So an example of this would be f of x equal to sine x. And we can see from the graph, this goes up and down, and so it doesn't ever stop, so therefore there is no limit. So remember the limit um, is a y value, and because sine x is oscillating, we don't actually have a limit here. All right, so we're gonna take a look at some more examples. Um, all the properties that you've learned so far with all the limit laws um, way back when we were doing limits, um, they still apply here. So the sum rule, the difference rule, the product rule, constant multiple rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule, they still apply uh, when x approaches positive or negative infinity. A uh, couple of theorems here. If r, that is the exponent in the denominator here for the variable, is a rational number, so as x approaches infinity, then that means that our denominator is getting very, very large, the limit is going to approach zero. 
And this is the same if r is, again, a rational number such that x to the r is defined for all x. And even when I approach negative infinity, 1 over something that's very, very large is still going to be 0.